Martin. Mm -hmm. You're still homeless in Austin. 13 years. 13 years. Every 13 years, August uh, 8th. However, I have, the first time I met you, as we were talking before the camera came on, I was in a bad, bad way. I couldn't even finish your interview. Um, I tried to kill myself. Uh, I've gotten help. I received Social Security supplemental income. Yeah. And I am on a program here, here in Austin. There are two foundations, the other one foundation and ECHO, uh, Ending Community Homelessness uh, Outreach and Organization. They do a survey called the ECHO survey and I'm chronically homeless, so I'm at the top of the list, uh, which means I'm between somewhere between 1 and 30. Um, and I, I'm, I'm very hopeful that this will be the last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And let me paint the picture a little bit. You, do, you went right off to the races. So we met probably three years ago. Yeah. Almost in the same spot. Yes, sir. Um, you agreed to the interview then, and we we're talking, um, and you got emotional and decided to stop. So I never published your interview because, out of respect <coughs> to you, I appreciate that. And I remember you did a lot of time in jail, prison. I spent 25 years in prison. And you said that you wouldn't go in housing. And now you're looking forward to going into housing. I am. I mean, I, listen, I spent 25 years in prison, not jail, prison. Right. I spent 25 years in prison and 18 of those years behind a 40 foot wall. I, and then the last seven of those 25 years were behind three fences. The middle one was electric. Um, so among my, Many problems, my mental problem, my emotional problems. Um, I was claustrophobic, and I had a fear that if I let the city find me an apartment and give me a deal where I would only pay 250 out of the 750 the, the place cost, and my electric and my water, uh, about four, four, five hundred dollars total. That they would be in control of my apartment. I felt like they could lock me in. I spent 18 of my 25 years incarcerated in the state of Indiana consecutively. Um, all 25 were back to back to back consecutively. Um, but the first 18 were a major level four maximum security prison. I still hear the doors clang shut. I still hear when I wake up in the morning or when I wake up to piss, I sometimes I hear, eh, call time. I'll never stop. I went to prison when I was 19. I was released from prison 25 years later. In many ways, I was still 19 years old. Right. So the fact that I ended up homeless is probably appropriate. I had never... Well, I don't think it's appropriate. I think when people get, you know, do your time, whatever the crime was, you did your time, then just putting you out on the streets, I mean, you can't get a job with the record, that well, they got to help people. But I want to, you know what, Martin, you helped me because the day we met, I realized that there's people that have done hard time that don't want to be in a box. So I started thinking about how housing, because I've met other people that have done hard time, and they're the same way. They're just like, well, I would go into an apartment, but I'm not going to stay there all day. I got to be outside. Yeah. So if we built spaces that had, you know, open areas, so you didn't feel like you were in a prison or inside a box, it would help people that did a lot of time go inside. It could. Um, claustrophobic, par it's not just being, it's not just being afraid of being trapped in your coffin, waking up and you're still alive. Right. It is, and that's pretty terrible. That's probably the worst thing you can have to you. Um, this is much more intense because you're alive, 
and you've trusted this person, these people, and they lock you in. Um, they can do this. There are civil commitment laws for violent offenders, for sex offenders, for uh, violent drug offenders, all over the country. You finish your time, they let you out on parole, and then somebody decides he should be civilly committed. And you are civilly committed. And that means, it's like being found not guilty by reason of insanity. You go to the mental hospital and you stay there. Uh, the guy who shot Ronald Reagan, John Hinckley Jr., just got out of St. Elizabeth's mental institution. He went in in 1981, after he was found not guilty by reason of insanity, and he came out in 2017 on parole. He lives with his 92-year-old mother, who, well, that was a couple years ago, so she's almost 99. What is that guy gonna do? What would John Hinckley do if he was released and a poor person and he had no mother, no family, no support? He'd be homeless. He'd be homeless and after, after a while he'd become a drug addict or a drunk, depending on his choice. But it happens. Um, I know, everyone I know was not addicted to drugs when they became homeless. You, be, you meet people, you become friends with people. You build relationships and friendships just like you do in, in the housed world. And um, the point is, the fact is, if my friends that I meet and really care about and, and we become very close, even if I resist methamphetamine or, or cocaine or crack cocaine in the beginning, just hanging around them and watching them function every day high on these drugs and not hurt anyone, not commit any more crimes no, other than doing the drugs. Yeah. Um, I'll start, the things, my fears of these drugs will erode to the point where one day I'll be watching them and I'll say, hey, let me hit that bolio. Or hey, I don't know how to do it, but I want to try it. Would you bang me up? It's, and, it's not easy doing homo sober. I mean, you got to add to that, you're also the stress of no sleep, uh, no safety, no security, no knowing where food's coming from, and exactly. you know you're seeing people escape the pain of homelessness with drugs. Sign me up. It it it, it provides a, a warmth, a welcoming. It's 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 not physical. It's it's not tangible. Yeah. It's figuratively speaking. It provides a coat of armor, yeah. uh, and not because you're high. I'm right. Now, I'm high right now. If uh, I've been smoking meth all day, but I function. Part of that is I'm college educated, and when I was when I was in prison, the state of Indiana, and I think most every states, most all of the states, have some kind of education programs. I got my GD in prison, and Indiana University, Purdue University, Ball State University, Notre Dame. University, uh, Earlham College, which is a private Catholic college, uh, all offer degree programs, two right. year, four year degrees. I'm proud to say that I graduated with a degree in general studies because you can't major or minor in anything. Uh, but you get a well rounded education. The best thing that college taught me was for my whole life, from age zero to age 19 when I was convicted and then the 25 years in prison, my whole life was any drama that came my way, any, anything that, that, was, that came my way that, you know, this was a response, man. Right. This was a fucking response. That got me sent to prison. And so what, going to prison was like marrying the love of your life for me, because it taught me how to be analytical, how to, I have, since I've graduated from college, in prison and out here on the streets of Austin, I have talked more motherfuckers down from this. Right. Either with me or one of my friends going at someone else. So college- You learn how to de-escalate. De and think, you learn how to think. Right. You ever hear the saying, I don't remember who said it, but it's from a long time ago, centuries ago. I think 
therefore I am? Just repeat that to yourself a few times. I think, therefore I am. Well, you know, the saying that I like you said earlier is that it's hard to hate somebody when you know them. It is. Um, and we're talking about awareness. But, but for, let's go back to, so you're smoking meth today. Yeah, I smoke it pretty much every day. And it's to escape, to keep you going? No, I like the way it makes me feel. I Listen, prison, the longer you stay in prison, the healthier you become. That's a fact. I got out of prison January 26, 2006. I'm five foot six. When I got out of prison, I weighed 165 pounds. I had a 32 inch waist and I had about almost 18 inch biceps, arms, all the way around. I bench pressed, my max was 315 and that was without my ass off the bench. My, when you bench press in a competition, if you raise your back or your ass up off the bench, it's not a, that's it, you're disqualified. So you have to, you can bounce it off your chest and then go with it, but you can't raise up because it gives you a little put, at a push. And the first time I picked up that much weight, I thought I was gonna die. And so my back arched like a U and my ass came off the bench and I got that motherfucker off me. Uh, but it's a lot of weight. It's, Especially it's, for a small guy like you. But, you know, size doesn't matter. I've seen small guys whoop big guys. Oh, yeah. I've seen big guys run from small guys. It, I mean, it's, we're all human. God made us, and we, we all have, in general, the so same. So what, 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 what do you like about meth? I, I was a meth addict. You know? I, like, I like the way it, sober, you can pick and choose what external stimulus or internal stimulus you respond to. But what meth does for me is it makes me more extroverted and, it, uh, and, I, and I'm just going everywhere, but I can calm down and focus and I can pick what I want to focus on and I can function, I can discuss it. Oh, maybe I am, you would like that. A lot of people that are AHD, AHA, the hypertension disorder. Well, no, if I was, then methamphetamine wouldn't affect me that way. Well, it, it makes you calmer and focus. I mean, yeah. for me, meth, I forgot about my problems because when I was smoking meth or, or snorting meth, whatever I was doing, whether it was tying my shoelaces or trying to, you know, paraphernalia or what I was so focused on yeah, that yeah. I didn't think about my problems intense focus intense concentration I, I get that too um, let me uh, plug myself for just a second sure I met a friend uh, my partner Herman Burick not not he's my friend my right. best friend I met him at St. Mary's Cathedral here in Austin within six months we have become very tight yeah and we have the same interests. He cares about homeless people like you do. Yeah. And so we've started a website. We're going to start a blog next month. Now, what's uh, the URL so people can know? I'll, I'll put a link down below. Uh, socialimperatives.com, all lowercase, socialimperatives.com. Yeah. Uh, it's not, we just started on, you, on uh, and our domain is YouTube. As you know, YouTube wants you to have 100 subscribers before you get a, a normal, regular URL. So. Uh, it'll take a while. It'll take a while. And we've got a lot of content, but um, every time we think we we have capped our ideas, our marketplace of ideas is full and we're closed, another question rises, another another what if, another why don't we do this? Or whatever. So by the time we get to where you are in your, in your journey and your work, the vault will be so full as you know I mean well I want to encourage you because you and your friend I assume he's housed yes he lives in uh, yeah, and, and you guys are documenting homelessness very authentically because you're out here you stay and, in a tent and I and I and I think that that contrast is awesome because I'm homeless my friend Herman is a tech industry he is our website developer we don't have to pay nothing 
um, for that for that service. Um, but uh, we work well together. We 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 in just six months we we've become so close. Yeah. He cares about. Well, you have people. purpose now, and, and it, it has it has given me a purpose because right. I, I hope that people look at me and Herman and say. This guy is homeless, but he makes sense. And this guy, Herman, God bless him for giving this guy a chance. Yeah. I have been thinking about this for a couple of years now. Uh, doing, I, I, my original thought was buying a camera like you have or something like that. Well, and you're going to get one in your next Social Security check. Right? Uh, well, yeah, my next Social Security check is on the first. Um, so I'm going to buy a Canon Rebel uh, T1100. Yeah. Um, the biggest issue about filming outside, as you know, and I've just learned the audio. This, is audio. Yeah. Um, so, uh, uh, that's why I'm so close with the mic. Yeah, exactly. And of course, as the ladies will tell you, I look really good close up. <laughs> <laughs> good sense of humor. You listen. But it will send people to your website. Thank you. Now, one of the things that I thought was so profound when you were telling your story earlier is after we met last time and it wasn't probably right after yeah. but you were going through depression Severe. and Severe. you tried to kill yourself and they found like what was it, a sack of garbage that was really you? Um, okay, so we have the Colorado River runs through downtown Austin and the bridge that separates South Austin from the main downtown area is called the Ann Richards Bridge because she was the governor and she very popular, beloved woman. Uh, and so they named, after her death, they named the bridge after her. And the police have river patrols. Right. They're not scheduled like, like day watch and night watch. They have river patrols and they go down there and they look for homeless people or other people, not just homeless, people selling drugs, uh, doing wrong, uh, just doing, you know, They've caught everyone from drug dealers to, to sleeping people to people making love, uh, which is not a felony, by the way, but it can get you in a little trouble. Uh, um, so I, I went, I just had it, man. I just had it. My sister died, and I just fucking had it. And, you know, like I told you um, before we started filming, um, I could do this homelessness thing forever living outside isn't so bad look I might make $30 a day or I might make as much as $120 a day and where's my bills my phone bill that's yeah, it but still I mean people are looking down on but you spitting uh, on you calling your name for hot coffee on you listen, it's, it's a it's the, a fucked up job the stigma attached to it the, the misinformation the lies the stereotypes they hurt, man. Yeah. They hurt because even though I, I I was a violent fellow, I tried to kill someone when I was next right. on methamphetamine. What you're doing now? What I'm doing now, and I, I'm not even killing an ant. Uh, one more remark about about my criminal past. I got out January 26, 2006. I have not been arrested for anything except the 190 plus classy misdemeanors I have for asking for money, peeing in an alley, sleeping. Oh, so you're shit. getting tickets for being homeless? Well, yes. They 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 repealed the ordinances uh, three or four years ago, and then the homeless people. I remarked to you earlier that. As a group, as a class, we need to be more responsible in our behaviors. Yeah. Part, the, the reason why, part of the reason why people dislike us and want us to go away and don't want to help us is because... There's some bad people. That, not bad, but like you said, mentally, mentally ill. Right, and um, they need to be taken care of. And Before we get too far away, though, you still didn't finish the story of okay, how yeah. they, they found you on so, the bridge. Uh, it was about 2.30 in the morning. Uh, I was at my camp with my buddies and uh, my ex-girlfriend, who became my, my running buddy, my partner, my confidant, uh, Sandra Evans. And 
I kissed her on the cheek. I said, I love you, Sandra. And she kind of half awake, half asleep. She said, all right, all right. And I left the camp. And I walked straight to the bridge. I walked from Ben White to Congress Avenue. That's a long stretch. And I never faltered in my belief that I was going to be dead in two hours. I got to the bridge. I looked on the east side, dark, dark like a river would be at night. I looked on the west side, and I jumped. When I jumped into the river, right before I did, I looked both ways and there was nobody there. I said to your father, and I jumped. The water, when I hit the water, I was knocked out. Yeah, you want to go check out the um, I was just, spit my skin off. I should have died back then. But there were two cops under the bridge taking a smoke break. They said, what the, f I can imagine. They said, what the fuck? So they motored on over there. And uh, one of the cops told a reporter or somebody that afterwards that we thought it was a bag of garbage. You know, people throw stuff over. And it was uh, you. And it was me. And they saved um, your life? They, they saved my life. Uh, uh, the one cop got to drive in the boat and calling for EMS to meet him at the shore. They were there when I got, we got there, I guess. Um, I woke up in the hospital with a handcuff on my leg because I wasn't under arrest. I was going to the mental hospital. Right, they were, they were because of the psych eval. Yeah, so, and I wasn't mad about the psych eval. I was pissed the fuck off that I couldn't even kill myself right. I mean, I was fucking mad. I, I remember meeting you. I mean, you, 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 you know, we did an interview, and out of respect, I didn't. And you're much better spirits now, partly because of purpose. Now you want to go into housing. Um, uh, I want to go into housing. I want to go into housing because th this is this is no way. This is no way for a human being to live. This is, this is, you can do it physically. Right. Anyone can do this physically. Without the stigmas, the stereotypes, if, if people were to respond to you, if people were to respond to your ask for money, like, oh sure babe, here you go, the world would be perfect. Um, but they don't, for whatever reason. Well, people are gonna be watching this and saying you're a meth addict. Why should we help a meth addict? Well, I, you know what? You don't have to help me because I get $980 a month from the government. Um, and I can pay my way. I just, because of my criminal past, and uh, I, it's hard for me to find some place. I, so you can rent a place, but because of your well felony and, and, and well, being inside. There's two things, really. The two major hurdles are my income is... If your, if your rent is $700 a month, and that's probably the lowest you could find in Austin. Right, that gives you 200 to live on. Yeah, but every landlord in the city, and a lot of these buildings don't have, they have managers, and the, the buildings, the land is owned by a corporation. Right. And they come up with this. We require that all potential clients all potential residents make double a month what the rent is. So if I get, like I said, $900 plus a month, if my rent is seven, seven or seven fifty, that's you gotta have fourteen, fourteen or fifteen hundred dollars a month. I don't have that. Um, so with the city comes in and classifies me as chronically homeless and in need of assistance because of these things and my crime, uh, then they guarantee the corporation and the management of that corporation that if he f skips out on his lease, we'll take care of it. If he 
if, uh, if right, right, right. But that, that's what I mean. People judge, you know, meth addicts. I was a well, meth addict. You know what? Um, I, I don't really care anyway. Um, one of the best things I did in my friendship with Herman, uh, and if you come to our website, you'll meet him. One of the things that I did early on in our friendship was he came to see me one night at my camp. I, I, I showed him how to get there. And we visited. That's true trust. That is. And, and this was only two months after we'd been associated, after we met. And I was in the midst of partying with myself. I, my friends were gone. I had an eight ball. And I, I had some music on my phone. Hey, journey all the way, right? Because I was born in the 60s and 70s. And I think Neil Sean. Man, if you're watching this, dude, I'm your biggest fan, dude. I think you're the best yeah, yeah, rock yeah. guitarist since Carlos Santana, who you know, by the way. Uh, but um, so I said, Herman, come on in. He came in my tent. Meth doesn't have a lasting aroma like marijuana does. Right, you right. smoke a, a joint or a blunt of weed, and as you know, it's going to hang in the air. Like right, a, right, right. And I take it he doesn't party. And he, and he used to, uh, and he didn't, uh, well, I heard him, and he said, Marty, hello, hello, Marty. So, I, I, and I cooled the meth pipe off, and I, we call it Bolo here, and uh, I stuck it in my pocket, and I said, Her Herman, come on. And I showed him how to unzip my, the doorway, and he came in. He said, I was just thinking about you, man, and my wife and daughter's at church, and I just want to see you. It made me feel good. Yeah. See, um, you do care. Yeah, I do. You do care. You, you know. I mean, I, I get you. You got to put out. You, you did 25 years inside. I, you got to be tough. It's about intimidating. You can't show weakness, right? The first thing a guy my size has to do when he walks behind that wall is make a statement. Right. Now, and, and, and so now you're here out on the street. That's not going to go away. It's not so, going to go away because... But you do care. I've been I've been hanging with you for about an hour now, and I can tell you care. I, I do, and I, I've i got good friends out here. Yeah. And yes, we do meth, yes, we do weed, but so, it doesn't compel us. And, and But you you crave more. Right, I, right, right. So you're on drugs. For whatever reason, you're on drugs. House people are on drugs. There's more house people on drugs than there are homeless people. I said that same thing right? in, my, in right, one of my right. videos. I had a friend the other day that was talking, you know, they say, you know, there's open drug markets where homeless are. Yeah. What do you think the bars are, right? Where they're doing the cocaine and selling cocaine and speed and meth and everything else. You, you, you don't see it because of the walls. We're on 4th Street right now. Yeah, yeah, no, don't, you don't have to go there, you know. Yeah. Uh, Everything but, but, from Viagra to meth to, to... Right, right, right. You can get inside, you just don't see it because there's walls, but because you're outside, people judge you as that, that addict. But, you know, you, you, you've you got to be inside. I mean, uh, well, I, I mean, how many times the EMTs get called? A lot. Right. Um, a lot. Be because you have health issues. Um, I'm I'm very I'm I'm better now. Um, since but we, but you know EMTs uh, get called and that's taxpayer money. So getting in you inside is the right thing to do, but it's also fiscally responsible because it saves money. Well yes I see what you're saying. And it, and even on does. mess, you've committed no crimes. I haven't a except well, for being homeless. Except yes, and my homelessness is a major offense in the city of Austin. In fact, I've been arrested over 190 times. 190 made... times, okay. Well, we've been going way too long, and it was funny because, I don't know if you saw the guy with the radio, my, my camera works probably extremely bad on this one. They pulled up with a radio blast, yeah, 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 and yeah. I got him there, but anyways, we've been going for a while. It's been an honor. You are a nice guy. You deserve to be inside, no matter, you know, what. I and uh, if you had three wishes, what would they be? I could climb out of the rabbit's hole and be 19 and be the day before May 6, 1980. I would go back to 19, May 5, 1980. 
you go back in time and change your life. It would not have happened. Yeah. That would be my first wish. My second wish is that people like me and like you, who are, who are, for however we got to this point, we are aware and we want to give something, we want to show people a, another side of humanity and, and let people know, yes, you can be scared, yes, you can be leery, but don't be exclusive. I mean, excluding. Don't, don't want to put me in a camp because I don't deserve that. I'm American. Um, we, I, I wish that we are successful, that you are successful, and that I am successful, me and Herman. Um, it's not about money. Um, it was like you, we, we, we formed a legal partnership uh, with the Secretary of State's office here in Texas. Right, right, you got purpose. You're, you're trying to educate people about homelessness, probably addiction, about being an ex-con. And, and, and that all of those titles don't equal the sum of me. Um, there's more to my character than that past. Okay. And, um, and every human being has some redeeming qualities. Um, we may not want them, they may do such horrible things that we don't want them living amongst us and they stay in prison forever. Um, but they have some redeeming qualities which come out in their prison life. Uh, they may... Well, anyways, yeah, I mean, so you, you've been out for 13 years been in no trouble None. and you are definitely I can, I know because of the times I've met you you're a nice guy my third wish you, go ahead my third wish would be that my, my father John William Bryan a World War II boy my mother Francis Jean Bryan of Gary Indiana he'd be alive you said that hold on one second you gotta Group of girls going by, all cackling. Um, that they could could have my sister and her son, my nephew, pick me up at the Gary Indiana bus stop, uh, Greyhound station, the day I got out of prison. My third wish would be that my mom and dad could have picked me up, and that they could have seen me free. Wow. My father's name is John William Bryan. Yeah, yeah. And my mother's name is Yeah, don't, you don't have to go there. Well, no, I just, I just wanted to say that. Yeah, are they still alive? No, they're gone now. Okay, so, because otherwise I might, I don't edit these, but I don't want anybody to, no, no, the I, internet's no. a scary place. Uh, no, I, I, no, all the breaking down in the green Yeah, room, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, so, that's okay. it's been an honor seeing you again. I didn't remember you. you I'm, I'm like blown away that you remembered me, dude. Because I, you changed me. <laughs> you changed my views on homelessness that night we met. So I'm grateful. Anyways, thank you very much for talking to me. You're welcome. It's been fun. It's been Stay fun. safe. Thank you. God bless.